Hi there. Oh, hi. Uh, your daddy was detained inside. He asked me to get you this. Uh, Mr. Bullock, uh, the doll he had it was broken. Uh, don't you want your dolly? Yes, but... But what? I'm not supposed to play the game with anyone but my father. Well, what game is that? It's a secret. Uh, maybe I can guess. Are you sure you have the right party? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, is it a trading game? Who are you, anyway? Oh, what do you give your daddy for the, for the doll? A uh, kiss? A little package? Yes, sir. Uh, just a minute, but what, honey? We don't trade till we get home. Uh, well, I think we ought to trade now. Yeah. No! Oh, when did you get this? I'm not supposed to tell. Your daddy slipped it in your pocket when you went to hug him, didn't he? That's part of the game, is it? Yes. Charlie, there's a dame in a nurse's uniform running out at the front entrance. Hold her for questioning. Okay. Well, there you are. Mister, you've just saved the United States government about $10,000 worth of revenue. Oh, he saved a great deal more than that. What do you mean? It just can't be explained in terms of money. Come on, I'll help you make the arrest. Well, um, you can go home to your Aunt Phoebe now. I can't. Now, don't you want it? Of course, but shouldn't I tell my daddy first? Well, I'll see that he knows. Are you a friend of his? I'm a friend of your mother's. Then you're a friend of mine. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Diamond. And thank you very much. Come on. Well, she was back where she belonged. The tough part was that one day she'd find out what kind of a guy her old man was. Well, anyway, she'd know something that few women ever learn. That is to beware of a man bearing costly gifts. run away. Why, Elaine? Won't you tell me why? Glenn, please take me with you tomorrow. I can't, honey. Please. Honey, please. We've been through this. I'm going to Miami for just a day. I'm going to be tied up in conference every minute of the time. It won't be any fun for you. Look, you'll be much better off here. You still haven't told me why you ran from me in the street. 
Nothing. We were walking along and you took off like a greyhound. You seemed frightened. It was nothing I told you. You have to take my head off. I'm sorry. Please take me with you, Glenn. You're a strange girl. Sometimes I think I know you and sometimes I don't. I can pack in five minutes. Honey, look, I want my head clear for work. I don't want to have to worry about you bored in a hotel room waiting for me. But I'll be stuck here, too. I don't know anybody in New York. Well, honey, there's so many things to do. Alone? Why are you so terrified of being alone just for a day? When I met you three months ago, you lived alone. Well, I had friends in Milwaukee. Something is terribly wrong. And if it's that important to you, I'll postpone my trip. Oh. No. I'm sorry, darling. I, I was just being feminine and foolish. Well, this is the first time you've had to leave me, and, well, this is a big, unfriendly city. I suppose I get someone to take you out while I'm gone. Who? Well, I'll get a friend. You won't be alone while I'm gone. As any tourist guide will proudly tell you, New York has the tallest buildings, the swankiest offices in the world. Well, naturally, they're not talking about my office. But then I have my own wash basin, and I get the same brand of water they serve in the Waldorf. My business, you gotta keep down the overhead. That's why I have no carpet, no waiting room, and no secretary. I debated whether it wouldn't sound more impressive if I let the girl at the phone service get it. Then she never answered before the fourth ring, and it was much too early in the morning to listen to the jangling of a phone bell. Hello? Yeah, this is Richard Dan. What can I do for you? Well, uh, Mr. Carpenter, I'm pretty busy right now. Um, uh, no. No, I think I can squeeze you in. Yeah, come right on over. Now talk about weird assignments. Now, this guy Carpenter walks into my office and says, take my wife out tonight. Now, this job looked like a ball. The one thing that was really strange, he asked me to pose as a friend. Now, who might argue with 100 bucks a day in expenses? Well, what do you think about nightlife? Oh, it's very interesting. There's only one city for me, and this is it. You know what they say, don't you? Every place outside of New York looks like Connecticut. I'm, uh, I'm doing all the talking. I'm beginning to hear my own echo. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Diamond. I, I don't talk much. I'm not good company. I'm not complaining. Are you in advertising, too? Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm what you might call a counselor in social relations. Well, how long have you known Glenn? Uh, since the war. You're originally from Milwaukee, aren't you? No. That's where you met Glenn, wasn't it? A sort of a whirlwind romance? I'd like to dance. My pleasure. I was beginning to feel like a heel accepting money for escorting such an attractive girl. For a moment, the impractical Richard Diamond spoke up in a small, tremulous voice and said, just charge with the drinks and taxis. Elaine! Elaine! Uh, waiter. Elaine, this is Diamond. Oh, I I'm all right. Really, I, uh, I had a wonderful evening. Well, now, I promised Glenn I'd look after you. Oh, but you have. It's, it's just that um, it's getting late and I'm tired. Now, look, I'll only stay a few minutes, I promise. Uh, scouts, uh, scouts on her. Really, Mr. Diamond, there's no need for you to be upset now. I, I, I get these dizzy spells and, 
Well, I've had them since I've been a little girl, and, and all I do is lie down, and they pass. Well, did you see something in the restaurant tonight that brought on this dizzy spell? Why, oh, I, I suppose it was... It was stupid of me to run away, but... Um, well, I didn't want to cause a scene in a public place. Well, is there anything I can do? Oh, nothing. I'm just a very moody girl, Mr. Dunn. You thought of doing anything about these moods? Like what? Like seeing a doctor. You mean a psychiatrist? That's what you mean, isn't it? Well, no, I didn't say that. Well, that's what you're thinking. You think I should be put away, too. Well, who else thinks that? Oh, I'm so sleepy. I, I, I really would like to go to sleep. Okay. You sure you're gonna be all right? Don't, don't open the door. Don't let them in. Tell them, tell them I, I went away. Well, tell who? Don't open the door, please. Mary, come in. Make yourself at home. No. You better leave her alone. When Elaine is like that, it's better to wait. Oh, Elaine is a very sick girl. That's why we are here, Mr. Carpenter. Uh, well, I'm not Mr. Carpenter. Uh, Mr. Carpenter is out of town on business. My name is Diamond. I'm a friend of the family. Oh, well, then perhaps that's even better. One can speak more openly to a friend about such matters. I'm Dr. Tesla. This is my assistant, Dr. Forrest. We operate the Oak Lane Rest Home just outside Chicago. Elaine was our patient until three months ago. She disappeared one night. Well, what was she there for? About a year ago, she had a mental breakdown. It was brought on by the tragic death of her parents. Uh, they were killed in a plane crash. You see there? Oh, and we have been searching everywhere for her. And then we find out that she has married, and we finally traced her to New York. So you followed us tonight? We wanted to be sure it was Elaine. And well, it was. She saw you and then she... And uh... she ran like a frightened child. Mental patients are like that. Sometimes they develop great hostility toward the people who are trying to help them. Yeah, well now, doctor, she seemed perfectly normal to me until she ran. Well, that's common with patients of her type. They are lucid for days, months, and then they relapse into depression, melancholia, or... Completely irrational behavior. Well, do you think you can cure? Oh, in a year or two, perhaps. Her husband, I suppose he doesn't know anything about her past. Uh, has he mentioned anything to you? No. No, he hasn't. But he will have to be told, unfortunately, this marriage is invalid. Elaine is not a mentally responsible person. You will help us. Well, how? Well, Elaine must be returned to the rest home at once. What do you mean now? Tonight? She shouldn't be left alone. People in her condition can do harm to themselves. She needs professional attention. Well, I understand, Doctor, but I'm afraid you'll have to wait for Mr. Carpenter to come back from Florida. Well, surely he would want her to have the best treatment. Oh, I'm only asking for the sake of the girl. We know how sick she is. Well, Mr. Carpenter will have to decide that. We have the authority to take her back. You'll have to wait for her husband. It may be dangerous to wait. Who's up? Come, Amy. We have warned you, Mr. Diamond. It is your responsibility. Who were those rude people? Well, they said they were your doctors. Dr. Tesla and a uh, friend. I never heard of them. Well, then why did you hide? I'm not used to being questioned. I said I never heard of them before. Never! I decided to call Carpenter, tell him what Tesla had said, and hang around until he came home. I didn't want Elaine to know I was calling her husband, so I went downstairs to use the phone in the lobby. Long distance, I'd like to call person to person to Mr. Glenn Carpenter in Miami at the Elgin Hotel. It's 
she has locked herself in. Have you the pass key? Well, yes, ma'am, but I just can't we get... We are Mrs. Carpenter's doctor. She is very ill. She might do violence to herself. Do you want to be held responsible? Well, no, ma'am, but I just can't Perhaps get... Perhaps this will help you decide. You're the doctors. Please bring the hotel wheelchair. We will take her down on the service elevator. Yes, ma'am. The Hotel Elgin in Miami, operator. That shouldn't be too tough. I'm sorry for the delay, but there's a convention in town, and all the lines of the Hotel Elgin are busy. Would you like me to keep trying and call you back? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Would you? Uh, no, don't bother. Mrs. Carpenter. Boy, she was out like a light. Yeah, well, where are they going? LaGuardia Airport, I guess. They said something about Chicago. Hey, LaGuardia, huh? Chicago, what I didn't know was whether there really was an Oak Lane rest home. Hello, I'd like the phone number of the Oak Lane rest home in Chicago, please. Just a moment, sir. I'll have to check it with Chicago information. Hello, sir. The number is Whitehall 4-8598. Would you like me to place the call now? Uh, no, thanks, operator. Gotta catch a plane. Bye. Time you read a magazine and you've managed to get the pretty stewardess's telephone number, they lower the flaps and the plane is banking off Lake Michigan, headed for Cicero and 63rd Street. Chicago's a big town, but Dr. Tesla had given me her card, the Oak Lane Restaurant. And since I had no other lead, I decided to check it out. Wait for me. Incredible story, Mr. Diamond. Fantastic and incredible. It's true Elaine Woodard has been a patient here for over a year, but all that time she hasn't been out of her room except for therapy. As for her getting married and moving to New York, I, that's absurd. I'm afraid you've been the victim of a hoax, Mr. Diamond. Well, the idea had crossed my mind, Dr. Norton. You say the names Tesla and Force mean nothing to you at all? Absolutely nothing. But Elaine's parents were killed in the plane crash, and she did suffer a nervous breakdown. That's the only part of the story that is true. Oh, here we are.
Well, Mr. Diamond? Well, Doctor, I'm afraid I owe you an apology. Not at all. I've done the same thing in your place. Dr. Norton was pretty convincing. But I'm a suspicious guy by nature, and the whole setup seemed just a little too pat. I talked my way into the morgue of the Chicago World Telegram, hoping I'd find a picture that'd tell me who the real Elaine Willard was. And there she was, with a smile on her face that hadn't been there since she'd first met a charming pair by the name of Tesla and Forrest. Smart guy would have gone back to New York, told the whole sad story to the girl's husband, and left him carrying the ball. If I wasn't smart, I was sore. That newspaper picture had me convinced. The real Elaine Willard had to be somewhere in the rest home. Otherwise, why had they tried the business with the phony Elaine? I knew she was there, I just knew it. And Diamond is never wrong. Well, hardly ever. They tried to pass her off as you. Who is she? Another patient. She's been like that as long as I've been here. Dr. Norton. It's John Willard. It's my uncle. What's he doing here? Well, give me one guess. He's the executor of your parents' estate, right? Now, listen to me. This is important. Can you make it alone for a few minutes? I guess so. There's a phone across the hall. You go over there and phone the police. You understand? I'm going to pay our uh, neighbors a visit. Come on. Careless. If you wanted hoodlums, why didn't you hire them? 
I didn't see anything until the door opened. Oh, and... be quiet. I pay you enough to handle things properly. Well, now you won't have to pay any more, Mr. Willard. Is this your usual practice to slug doctors while they work? Oh, come on, Willard. I'm way ahead of you. Now, Mr. Diamond, this is a family matter, private. So I gathered. But what were you going to do? Keep Elaine here until she really got sick? Then you'd commit her for life, and as her guardian, you'd live off the fat of the estate. I don't know anything about an estate. He hired us to take care of Elaine. We run a respectable place. We are licensed. For kidnapping? He brought her. She was sick. I bet. That's right, Mr. Diamond. I was sick. I did have a nervous breakdown after my parents' death. But I recovered. And now I see that you're still trying to convince me that I'm sick. The only thing the matter with me is that I'm tired. Well, that's all right, honey. You'll get a rest. You just stick with me. And this group, they're going to get a long rest, too. And another kind of rest, don't they? Now stop worrying. He's going to be here in a minute. Well, you don't know how glad I am it's over. This past year has been like a bad dream. You'll have to go to Chicago and testify against those three when the trial comes up. You know, I think you ought to tell Glenn all about it. You don't know how many times I wanted to tell him. And I know it's foolish to be ashamed, but... I just couldn't bring myself to tell him I'd had a nervous breakdown. I was afraid I'd lose him. Glenn! <laughs> <laughs> well, honey! Whoa, I've only been away 24 hours. <laughs> Hi. Uh, welcome home. You two have fun? Yeah, it was very interesting. By the way, here's my bill. Well, that's all right. She knows all about me. Plane fare to Chicago. Return trip for two. Hey, what is this, a gag? No, it isn't a gag, darling. Now, I'll tell you all about it later. Uh, so long, uh, friend. And, uh, any time you want to leave her in my care, it'd be a pleasure. See ya.